Hi, today I am doing some herbal medicine making and thought that I would share with you what I am doing. So I am making tinctures. So tinctures are when you submerge herbs in al alcohol and you leave them for several weeks um, to extract the medicinal qualities of the herb. And then you strain it and you put it in uh, tincture bottles like this so that you can take the herb, whatever it is. This just happens to be an echinacea, which is something I'm going to be making today. So you can see I make a lot. I have some over here in the corner behind me. I have several here. This one's a reishi. I have a goldenrod, um, the echinacea, skull cap, and I even have hops, which I put in this bottle here. I made a bunch of hops. Um, hops is wonderful. Um, for relaxing, for bedtime, and things like that. And so I just put it in this bottle because I want it in a dark colored bottle. You want to store them in a dark colored bottle in a cool, dry place. And so I just want to show you what I have here. Um, today, I'm going to be making a tincture out of nettle root. You can see it's brown. It's the root, not the leaves. Um, it's not something that we normally use with nettle. Um, nettle, we usually use in the form of the leaves or the seeds. Um, they're all very high in minerals, um, all the parts of the nettle. Um, but nettle root is specific to urinary conditions. So someone who has uh, kidney stones, they need to flush um, their urinary tract. A lot of times, they'll, if someone has kidney stones, they'll give them medications to um, get them to urinate more frequently and help with a heavier flow. Um, someone <clears throat> with prostate conditions, nettle root is wonderful for that. Um, someone with chronic um, urinary tract infections where you want to just keep increasing that urine flow, that is when you would use a nettle root. Um, another tincture I'll be making today is burdock root. So burdock root is wonderful for, it's called a blood purifier. So for cleansing the blood, um, it provides lots of minerals and nutrients that are needed for the blood. Um, burdock root is very common in um, most of the world as a vegetable, just not here in the US. We don't think of it as a vegetable. We grow it here on our farm. Um, it's a lot like a carrot. It's long and slender, it's brown, and uh, it's wonderful in soups and stews and stir fries. Um, but we chop it up and dry it and then use it medicinally as well as using it in our foods. And then the last one I'm going to make today is the echinacea root. Um, so we do grow echinacea here on our farm. If you grow echinacea, you want the roots of a plant that is about three years old. And I don't have any right now. And so I did buy um, some, this is from Frontier Co-op. I bought organic echinacea root. Um, one of my favorite sources is Mountain Rose Herbs. You can order from there. Just get their organic um, cut dried roots there. Um, if you use it at home, you can use it fresh, which is an excellent um, way to do that. Um, and then there's some other places, uh, Star West Botanicals, they have um, organic roots as well. If you buy on Amazon, you may get some uh, good quality herbs there but you do have to watch it because sometimes those herbs have been stored for a long time. And once they've been cut, they don't last as long, which is why we tincture them. Um, tinctures can last for several years. Um, you can make um, herbal medicine with something like glycerin or vinegar, um, but those don't even last. They last longer than like a tea. A tea will last one to two days. You could put it in the refrigerator and have it another day. But um, if you want to make it last longer, Glycerites, um, which are made without alcohol, they last almost a year, and the same with vinegar. Vinegar is not as um, great as giving you a high quality. There, are Different herbs need different um, menstruums, um, which is the liquid that you use. These three are all excellent used with alcohol. So I'm using today, this one is from Lab Alley. We order it because it is made without grains. So vodka was traditionally, I'm using vodka. So vodka was traditionally made with potatoes, but now pretty much all the commercial vodka you can buy um, has grains in it. I wanted one that is grain free so that it's safe for celiac, um, people with celiac um, illnesses. So what I'm saying is um, you can use whatever vodka you feel is safe for you. 
um, we don't drink it. So people get confused. They're like, wait, why am I using alcohol? Alcohol, not, alcohol is not good for you. But what we're doing is we are extracting all of the medicinal qualities and we're taking it in a tincture form. Um, and so what we're taking is only what is in this dropper full, which I think it comes out to uh, half a teaspoon maybe. And so that amount is not going to cause injury to you. If you are concerned about the alcohol or you're making a, something for someone who has liver disease, then you may not want to make a tincture. You may want to make a glycerite, which is made with glycerin, um, which we will do in another talk, but you wanna make sure you get a food safe, um, vegetable-based glycerin. Um, but like I said, we'll use that on another one. Those are also great for children. Um, glycerin is very sweet, and some of these don't taste really great, and so that can help if you are using them for children. Now, when I use herbs, I don't use a, an herb, like we hear, uh, a pill for very a pill for every ill um, I don't think that way in terms of herbs herbs are more for balancing the body bringing the body the nu the nutrients that it needs like I drink nettle tea quite regularly because it's very high in minerals I don't want those minerals to nourish my body our soils are depleted and so this is just another way to take some minerals that are in a natural form. They're not synthetic, and so I like to use nettle. And so I make nettle tea, which is the dried leaves or the fresh leaves, we have it here on our farm, and I extract it in my water, which is actually the best way to extract medicinals from a plant. Um, so alcohol is one of the best ways for most plants. Um, second best, I mean, water is best, second best. This is a great book here, um, the Herbal Medicine Maker's Handbook. And it'll even tell you um, which menstruum is best for which herb. So to, today I looked up to see which ones I wanted to use to make a tincture. So the things you will need, a sterile jar, um, something to uh, put a label on those jars, and then your alcohol, and I'm using water because this is a 190 proof um, alcohol. It's actually made from sugar cane, not potatoes. And so I want to add a little bit of water to it. Um, the best, the, another thing this book will tell you is if you want about a 50% alcohol or a 100% alcohol um, solution. So this is considered 100%, even though it's 190 proof, alcohol does absorb some water from the air. Um, for most of them, regular vodka, um, this is one that is also um, safe for celiac, I believe. Don't take my word for it. Um, but this one is, is 40%, so it's an 80 proof. Um, and that one is actually um, good for a lot of them. So I'm using all dried herbs today. If I were using fresh, I would just use the straight 190 proof alcohol because the fresh herbs have water already in them. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to wet them with some water and then add this. Because we remember, water is the best way to extract it. But if I don't add the alcohol, then I'm not going to be able to preserve it. The alcohol is going to um, preserve it as well as extracting some nutrients. So the first thing I want to do, let's start with the nettle root. First, I'm going to put a label on my jar. And I'm going to put the name, nettle root. So remember what form it is and the date. And I'm going to stick this on my jar because I'm making three and I, by the time I'm finished, I'm not going to remember what is in each jar. So I'm put that on here. And then I'm going to open my bag and I'm going to fill the jar. Now, if I were using a powder, I would not fill it all the way up because um, it's going to swell up when I add the liquid. Because it's not a powder, this is the dried roots. Can you see that? And it's the dried roots. Um, I filled it up. Now I could go ahead and wet it with some water, fill it the rest of the way with um, alcohol, but I am going to put it in a coffee grinder 
This is just a, an inexpensive coffee grinder I ordered on Amazon. You can get them at Walmart for 10, 15 bucks. I'm going to pour it in here. You do not have to do this step, but the smaller your particles, the more medicinal qualities you're gonna be able to pull out of your tincture. And so I'm going to grind it up and then I'm gonna pour it back into my jar and then proceed. So let me plug this in and I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, here is my nettle root in my coffee grinder. Once again, you don't have to do this step. I just wanna make it smaller. When I open it up, you can see it really, it didn't grind it up too much, but much better than it did. You can see some dust in the air. I'm going to pour it back into my jar carefully. Try not to spill it everywhere. I could grind it a little bit further, but because of time, I'm just gonna leave it like this. And get it all in there. And so you can see, I ground it down. It doesn't fill it all the way. I'm going to wet it with some water. So most of them you want 50% water, 50% alcohol. So because there's something in there, I could fill up a jar with 50% alcohol and 50% vodka and then add it in. And so I think that is what I will do. I have my water over here. Once again, if I were using an 80 proof um, alcohol, I wouldn't have to do this because it already is at 40% alcohol, which is fine as well. All right, so I'm gonna fill it up. You can see it bubbles because of the air in there. And you wanna make sure that you have more liquid than you do uh, substrate because it's going to expand. It's dry, so it's gonna absorb the moisture, it's gonna expand, and so I need to give it some room and I'm gonna check it in a little while to see if I need to add even more um, alcohol water mixture um, because as it absorbs some, I don't want it to be dry. I want it to be liquid and I want more liquid than I do, uh, than I have here. So let me put a lid on it. I'm gonna give it a little shake and let it sit while we do the next one and then I'll see if I need to add some more alcohol water mixture. Now I could, just add alcohol, I don't have to worry about adding this. Okay, so here we go, I'm gonna leave it to sit. All right, while we do the next one. So my next one I'm going to do is the burdock root. And so I'm going to fill up my burdock root, fill up my jar. And I have little silica packets in here. I don't know if you saw that fall in. So this time I'm gonna use a blender. Just to show you, you don't have to have a coffee grinder. You could use your blender. So I'm putting it in my Vitamix. I'm trying to find that silica thing that fell in. Dun, dun, dun. Because I dry these at home, I wanna make sure they're good and dry because I don't want any moisture in there. So I get these from Amazon um, just to keep my herbs dry. Okay, so I have that in here. Put this away. And I could grind it dry, but it's gonna be a lot easier if I just go ahead and add this. It's, remember, this is 50% alcohol, 50% um, water. So I'm gonna add that and I'm gonna blend it. Actually, I'm gonna add a little bit more. And it doesn't have to be an exact science. So this is the traditional method to make, make herbal medicine making. You can also, there's a weighted one where you weigh and measure and do and calculate exactly how much you need to add as far as vodka and, or alcohol and water. Um, but that's a little time consuming and it's not as user friendly, friendly for everyone. The easiest thing to do, pour your herbs in, cover it with 80% um, or 80 proof alcohol, cover it, shake and you're done. That's the easiest and you can definitely do that.
All right, so I'm going to grind it up. There we go. Pour it into my jar. still have some in here so I'm gonna grab a spatula for that okay get all of this in here so once again so burdock root is full of minerals it is called a blood purifier and um, it's wonderful um, to help protect um, from DNA damage, help repair DNA damage, all sorts of wonderful qualities in burdock root. All right, so that is the second method I am using today. And you can see it's already swelling up. I'm probably going to have to add um, some more alcohol to that. And I didn't put a label, so before I go any further, this is burdock root. Burdock root. We use the the root is like the carrot. It's not a carrot. It's burdock. the label off of this I'm not gonna know what it is so I need to move this out of plastic into a dark colored jar for storage and um, like I said it isn't gonna last very long because it's already cut I don't know how long it's been um, harvested and dried either because I didn't dry it myself all right and the last one I'm doing is echinacea and I want to use this jar here which is already wet so that'll be a might be a little bit of a challenge but I don't have to grind it up. Now, once again, if this was powdered, I would not fill it all the way up. I would only fill it about three quarters of the way up. All right, so the third method I'm going to use, once again, I can just cover it with the um, alcohol, either 80 proof or 50%, 190 proof, and water um, and just cover and shake or I can put it in here and I can grind it with a mortar and pestle break it all up and all that's doing is breaking it down so that I have more surface area to extract those medicinal qualities if I had purchased the in powdered form, then all I would do, I would not worry about breaking it down. And when I'm feeling lazy or I'm in a hurry, I don't worry about breaking it down either. Okay, so I already noticed I did not label it. So before I go any further, let me label it. This is Echinacea. And this one is Echinacea root. I like the roots better than the, you can use the whole part. You can use the flowers, the leaves, um, all of it. But for the most um, medicinal um, properties, the highest, strongest, I use the roots. And once again, from plants that are three years old is best if you grow your own. So Echinacea is wonderful for the whole immune system. Um, it's also um, wonderful for uh, an antihistamine, um, allergic reactions. If you have an allergic reaction, please seek medical counsel. Um, but if it's something mild like runny nose, um, a bee sting that is not sending you into anaphylactic shock, um, then echinacea is wonderful for that. Um, when I was much younger, um, people would use um, echinacea, kind of like the way they use elderberry today. And so people would take echinacea regularly to help prevent um, colds and viruses. 
Um, echinacea is one of those that your body can get used to. And so you don't want to take it daily, regularly, um, but you could take it like two weeks on, two weeks off, two weeks on, two weeks off. And what we do is if we know that colds and flus are around us, then we will take it if we feel like we've been exposed and we will increase how often we take it if we are definitely exposed or if we start feeling like we're getting sick then we would take it um, a lot more often. And so we like to have it on hand for um, insight, insect bites and stings and um, just to help with any reactions that way and then in our first aid kit and then also if we are exposed to um, viruses and things like that. All right, so for my last one, what am I going to use? I'll use this jar to combine my water and my alcohol. Only because mine is 190 proof, it's not the 80 proof. Shake it up, see if I need to add some more and let it sit for a minute and see how much I need to add to the top. And then there's one more thing I need to show you before we finish. Okay, so let's check them one more time. So here is my nettle root. It really swelled up. So let's take the lid off and look at it. You can see there's not any liquid on the top. So I have another um, combination, half alcohol, half water. Don't do that with the 80 proof, only with the 190 proof. Don't do it if you are using fresh plants because fresh plants do have water. So I filled it up. I want to make sure I have liquid on top and I want to wipe the edges of the jar and the lid of the jar so that I get a good seal and to make sure everything is wet. And so here is the lid. You can see when I shook it, everything got stuck to the lid, not everything, some of the herbs. So I want to dry that really good because the alcohol will corrode the lid. So to protect it, I'm gonna put a piece of parchment paper between the lid. Between the lid and the jar. Now I can get my scissors out and cut it and make it look pretty. Or I can do it like this. Okay, so here is my nettle. Give it another good shake. And I'm gonna leave it here on the island where I see it so that when I've, whenever I walk by, I can pick it up and give it a shake. I wanna make sure that everything is just getting stirred up, mixed up. I want to extract as much as I can. And I'm gonna let it um, stay in this jar for about a month and then I will strain it. So let me do the other two. Oh, that one really soaked up there. This is my burdock root. Definitely needs more liquid. Cover it up. I may even need to check this one again later um, in the day to make sure that there is more liquid in there. Don't want anything dry. I want it all submerged in the liquid. Okay, you can see I left some space at the top too because it may still be expanding. All right, wipe off my lid. Parchment. And my last one is my echinacea. 
you can see even when I shake it it's looking pretty dry I'm gonna need to add some more water and alcohol yes look there's not much liquid at all in there Right. Wipe the jar. You can see it bubbling from uh, the little air pockets in there. go. I'm going to have to come back and check later uh, in a couple of hours to see if I need to add some more liquid to that. All right. So I want to show you one more thing. Let me go grab something. Okay. So remember, I'm going to put these somewhere where when I walk by, I give them a good shake to help extract any more of the medicinal qualities. Then in about four weeks, I'm going to mark it on my calendar to remember it's time to strain them. What I'm going to do is I like to use a measuring cup, a strainer, and a piece of cheesecloth or muslin. You can see it's kind of got rough edges. And I usually like to use two. Um, I can fold this one over because it's big enough. And I put it inside the strainer. I like two just to help catch any more um, matter in there. But you can buy like cheesecloth like this too. So what I will do is I will open it up. This is one I did. I only did this one a week ago, so I don't want to strain it today. But all I will do is take the lid off, pour it through this um, cheesecloth here, and let it sit, let all the moisture go through. And then I will pull up the edges and I will twist it to get any more of the alcohol out. And then I'll be left with the strained echinacea. This one's echinacea that I just did. And then I will use a little funnel and pour it into a tincture bottle like this. I'll just pour it all in. Make sure you have a good clean bottle. You don't have to have one with a dropper, but we find that one's the easiest way. Um, like you can use a jar like this and then do like half teaspoonfuls. You could even do one like I did with my hops. You just want a dark colored bottle that you can put in a cool dry place and then make sure you put a label so these labels aren't so pretty but they tell me what they are what they are and when they were made um you can order these little like chalkboard labels here like i have some ready for mullen and you can even get like these paint pens that look like chalk they're so pretty and cute you can order something online make some make your own whatever and then you have your different tinctures. So before I go any further, I did not give you a medical disclaimer. I'll put one in the comments. Um, so all of this is for educational purposes. Um, I am not a doctor. I do not treat or prescribe. I am not telling you um, to take these um, for medicines. I use herbs to bring the body back into balance. Um, I use echinacea in my first aid kit and things like that, but I'm just teaching you. I'm not telling you to do these things. Um, and once again, that will be in my, uh, in the comments, you can read my disclaimer there. Um, but I just want to go back over again. I'm using the echinacea just for immune and, uh, allergic responses. I use the burdock root. It is the blood purifier for high minerals, cleansing the blood, aiding the liver, aiding the, um, kidneys, and then nettle root, um, just to increase urine flow. Um, we use this one. It, nettle is very high in minerals, but this one is specific for the urinary tract. Um, and so that is what I have those for. So in summary, the easiest way to make your tincture is to buy an 80 proof vodka with dried herbs. Um, fill it about, if you're not going to grind it up, fill it about three quarters full. If you're using a powder and then you want to do about a half to three quarters full and fill it up with the 80 proof. 
cap it with parchment paper, give it a good shake, and stick it somewhere where you, every time you walk by, you can give it another shake. Mix it up, mix it up. Make sure that you keep adding liquid so that you have liquid on top. You want everything completely submerged. So check it um, every few hours until you see that it has stabilized and you know you're not gonna need to add any more liquid. If you use a 190 proof alcohol, like I used today, then you do want to add some water. Uh, most herbs need a 50% alcohol, 50% water. So if you're using dried herbs, that's easy. You can do half and half. If you're using fresh herbs, then just go ahead and use the straight 190 proof. Your fresh herbs have water in them. Um, if you want to set them out to dry a little bit to remove some of that moisture, then go back to the 80 proof or do, a, do more, do more like 75% alcohol, 25% water, if they're not completely dry. Um, so other herbs that I have here are my, my echinacea, I have my goldenrod, which people think, wait, goldenrod, people are allergic to gold, goldenrod. No, they're allergic to other plants that just happen to flower at the same time as goldenrod. So goldenrod has um, wonderful qualities, golden, that yellow is like berberine, which is in things like Oregon, um, grape root or in turmeric or in golden seal and so that is wonderful this is actually a wonderful remedy for those um, fall allergies that we get when the goldenrod is blooming um, I have skull cap which is wonderful uh, for nerve endings um, skull cap I like it as a tincture instead of as a tea or something like that because it needs to be taken um, regularly. You don't really receive any benefits from using it until you have used it long term. Um, but medical disclaimer, this is all for educational purposes. Do your research before you take these herbs. Hops, um, we really like. It does not have a fabulous flavor. I actually don't really care for the flavor and so that is why I put it in a tincture form. And reishi, reishi is wonderful for immune health, um, cancer protective, and just all sorts of wonderful reasons to take reishi, so that's why I have it. But I wanted to show you this one specifically. Can you see it has some sediments on the bottom, so it needs to be strained again. Um, you don't wanna have too many materials on the bottom, so if you strain it, you want it to be clear um, I don't know if I have another one that you can see through. If you see in the hops, I don't know if you can really see, but the hops is clear. There's no particulate in there. And so that is why I doubled over the cheesecloth or I put two layers of cheesecloth in there. Anyway, have fun with your herbal medicine making. Um, here are my herbs today. If you learned something today, let me know. Post in the comments and share. Please hit subscribe. I love to hear from you. Let me know what herbs you are using and why.